Welcome back, fine art students. So if you are watching this video, that means you are ready to begin painting your watercolor mosaics. Uh, but before you get started with the final draft, I think it's a really good idea to practice a little bit. Practice different styles, get a feel for it because it is pretty advanced, a little bit tricky. And if you just dive right in, you might not be happy with the results. So it's always good to practice a little bit. So before you get started, you have to make sure you have everything you need. You're gonna need some scrap paper of uh, watercolor paper. You're gonna need some watercolor paints. It doesn't really matter what kind. You can use a palette like this, which most of you probably have this, or you can use these tubes. Um, you're gonna need some water, a cup of water, a palette or plate or something to mix your colors on. And I always like having a napkin or a paper towel to clean my brush off with. And if you wanna get really creative with some of it, you can get some table salt to make some more textures in your, uh, in your paint. So with that said, there's a lot of different ways you can do this. I'm gonna show you some techniques and tips on how to hold the brush to keep your hand nice and steady. And I'm gonna explain the different styles that you can practice. So first of all, if you wanna go with the more generic basic mosaic look with the use of just all squares, you can do that. And the key here when you're painting is to keep your palm, and I even rest the knuckle of my pinky right here on the table, and that stabilizes your hand, keeping your hand nice and steady. And if you don't do that, just hover your hand over or keep your elbow down and your hand just hovering. Uh, you have a lot less control over the brush. Also, where you're holding the brush makes a difference. If you hold the brush all the way out here, it's a lot more wobbly. I like to hold the brush a little bit more further down. So with that, with that said, I'm gonna rest my palm, knuckle down, and you can just start painting nice, neat, organized squares. You're gonna wanna keep your shapes nice and small, but don't make them so small to the point where you are struggling with it. If you're having a hard time keeping control of it, then maybe use a little bit larger shapes. And I, I've got to explain this right away. Your shapes are not going to be perfect. You are not a robot, and that is totally fine. Your shapes are going to be a little bit wobbly, a little bit off. But in the grand scheme of things, when you look at the whole picture, it's not even going to matter. So the whole point here is to paint small shapes right next to each other, leaving a white sliver of space in between. When you finish the entire thing, it will give you a really interesting, cool mosaic look where you're using small, tiny shapes to build up the look of one image. All right. Another thing to focus on is the transparency of your color or how opaque it is. And what that means, if you use a lot more water and less paint, you're gonna have a lighter color to work from. And some areas you're gonna want some light shapes, very light shapes. And notice how I'm just picking up some colors from some other areas to fill that in. There's nothing wrong with that. You can use some lighter areas, some darker areas, some areas that are kind of in between. You can even take a watery area and pick up a little bit of paint and kind of dab it in there and get some areas that are a little bit darker than others, creating a little bit of texture. All right, another technique you can use is Maybe a flowing technique where in the background or part of your image, you're actually gonna draw out some wavy lines. Maybe they intersect with each other and just draw them out lightly. And when you go in and paint those, you're just gonna go right up to the pencil line, really close to it, but don't paint over it. And when you're all finished with your project, with your design, you'll go in with an eraser and clean all that up and it'll look super clean and neat. So don't dig into the paper with your pencil there, making it really dark. Just nice light lines, because we're gonna get rid of those towards the end. All right, another tip <clears throat> is your color choice. So I know for my final draft, uh, there's gonna be a lot of areas that are dark blue. So I'm gonna use a color like this as my base blue. And if I do that, I don't wanna stick with the same color and repeat it over and over again because that'll be a boring mosaic. You're gonna to wanna to add some different tones to it, maybe get some darker blues mixed in, get some lighter blues, get some blues that have 
uh, that are a little bit more opaque or a little bit more transparent and use a variety of colors. It'll make your image look way more interesting. And if you use this technique, eventually you're gonna kinda of get smaller and come to a point at the end of it, just like that. Um, my favorite style, to be honest with you, is probably something like this, where it's a lot of random shapes that are just kind of fitting in like a puzzle. I like that because you have a lot more, a lot more freedom on what you can do, the shapes you can make. Um, you have a lot more wiggle room for mistakes. And uh, it just, I think it looks really cool. Or you can go with more of like a chevron look. The nice thing about this is that if you use one side that's dark, one side that's a little bit light or more transparent, kind of gives it a value effect, making it look like there's lighting hitting it. Um, you can go with something a little bit more organized with just rows of rectangles. You can go more geometric with hexagons or triangles um, and keeping it nice and neat. But there are endless options to this project. So right now I just want you to practice these and see what you enjoy, what you like, what works best for your idea, your final draft, and then you can get going with it. One more thing I forgot to mention, if you do make a shape that is a little bit more transparent, that's pretty dark, let me get a little less black in my brush. A little more transparent like this. If you have any table salt laying around, sometimes it's kind of cool to just sprinkle a little bit of salt in there and it leaves a cool little texture behind. Um, another thing you can do with that technique of keeping your paint a little bit more transparent is going in with other colors and just adding a splash of a different color in there to kind of soak it in and make little shadows or little textures in there like that. Sometimes that looks really interesting and really cool as you build up your project. Um, finally, like I mentioned earlier, none of us are robots. We are not going to be painting perfect shapes and there's nothing wrong with that. In fact, it looks kind of cool to have it more uh, a little bit more imperfect throughout the image. If there are some areas that really bleed together that bother you a lot, you can go in when it's all dry with a white gel pen or white marker and you can clean those areas up. So right here, some of these shapes are a little shaky. I can use this pen to just clean up those edges, make them a little bit more crisp and clean. And this will be one of the final steps to your project. So at this point in time, um, experiment, have some fun, figure out what you enjoy, what you like, figure out what you think will be best for your project. And once you figure that out, have some fun and get going.